how can we encounter Yahweh Nisi? The Lord is my banner, that powerful, victorious name of God. That's the topic we're going to be addressing today on Flourishment. I'm your host, Tina Yeager. And today I have an amazing repeat guest. I'm so honored every time I get to bring him on the show. He's a modern day Renaissance man, Benny DiChiara. He's a singer, songwriter, recording artist, businessman, motivational speaker, father and husband. And in October of 2015, he suffered a traumatic brain injury that actually fractured his skull. He suffered a concussion, and the injury could have easily ended his career and his life. But the astonishing thing was that he had a rapid and nearly full recovery, which was miraculous. And this healing process, not only was it a miracle in his life, but it also created the opportunity for blessings for everyone that would hear his music because he created during the healing process and made a brand new amazing album three days and he's here to talk to us about his messaging behind the new album yahweh nisi welcome benny i am so delighted to have you on flourishment today yeah thanks for having me back it's a pleasure to see you again yeah absolutely and i can't wait to get into this messaging because you've got an edgy very powerful new set of sounds coming out on the yahweh nisi album but it's also got really wonderful preachable messages behind it so talk about why the words yahweh nisi the lord is my banner surfaced in your heart and your spirit as something that you really wanted to bring to audiences through this work yeah, thanks for that. So I know we were talking about three days coming, you know, October coming up is going to be eight years since the brain injury. So still no taste, still no smell, but we're talking. So that's a win and we have to learn how to take a win. And uh, and God's like, hey, we're not done. We're not done here yet. So he saved my life. And that's where like Jeremiah 29, 11 came out of for, for the three days record. So Fast forward to last year, the end of last year, we put Yahweh Nisi together. God was just impressive. I had been doing studies on the name of the Lord and Yahweh Nisi, Yahweh Nisi. So I get, I'm looking it up and I'm doing all this research, everything, the Lord is my banner, right? And so if I can be honest, and maybe this will apply to your viewers or your listeners, um, God was like, there's a lot of evil in the world right now, a lot. And there's evil people in positions of power in government, school, just you name it. Watch the news. You can see Revelation being lived out and even in some churches. And just and God is like, there's millions of people on the earth who call themselves Christian. So my question is, where are you and why are you silent? And that was like a dagger coming directly through my chest. And, and I'm like, oh, and he says, that's right. Mr. I have a Christian rock band, like, where are you? And so like, yes, you're bringing life affirming messages through your music, but it's time for a battle cry. And I need a battle cry. I'm talking marching feet and aggressive and, and just we're gathering God's army to open their mouths and start fighting back and defeating some of this stuff that we're seeing. So, and I was like, oh, okay. Okay. And if you think about it in biblical days, in the medieval ages or whatever, when an army went to war, there was a guy out front and he was the standard bearer, right? He had the banner. So banner went left, army went left. Banner went right, army went right. But if you were the enemy and you saw the banner coming, you thought, oh, here we go. This looks like trouble. The world needs to have a, oh, this looks like trouble. Look who's coming moment, right? And so I was like, yes, Lord. And so, and and we wrote it. It's probably the most aggressive song that I've written. It's not like heavy metal or anything, but there's definite energy to it and purpose to it and drive to it. And it's it's calling God's army together, saying, enough of the silence. Let's fight this anti-biblical stuff that's going on in the world right now. And that's where, that's where, the, so Yahweh Nisi is a title track, and that's where that came from. 
So this is a war cry. Pretty much. Yeah, it, it is like, it's like, let's go. So you're talking about God coming on the heels of the pandemic and into a space in this world climate where there's so much going on, people are stressed. And you're saying, instead of feeling helpless, stand up and know who your banner is. Exactly. It's my personal belief, not to offend anybody. I think, I think COVID dumbed the world down for a year, you know, lock yourself up. As a matter of fact, lock yourself away from church. I mean, there's a lot of evil went on during that time as well. Right. So, so you have all that going on, but in the same sense, you know, when, when, when Israel was being led out of Egypt, God provided a pillar of cloud for them to follow during the day and a pillar of fire at night to light them and warm them with all that kind of stuff and lead them out of Israel, right? But what most people don't understand is Israel still had to walk. They could have stepped back and said, wow, look at this manifestation of God. Let's let's hold back and see what he does. And in my mind, I'm like, how often do we do that? Even as Christians, right? Let's see what God does with that. And God is going, I'm showing you the way. I need you to walk in it, right? And and it's 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 really a faith move. For me, it's a stage and the band and there's lights and we're performance and worship and there's all that. And it's not about being a rock star. It's about making Jesus famous like he needs that. But that's what we're doing to bring his message to people. For you, it's your podcast. For a doctor, it could be a surgical suite or his office. Or for a business person, it could be their staff meeting where they can insert a little Jesus into that saying, let me tell you what God's doing with our business. Now, I know this may not be natural for some people, but what we're doing right now isn't natural either, right? It's just not, except for the fact that we are both walking and we're, we're, we're following the pillar per se. Um, while it's not a physical manifestation of God, he took care of that because the Holy Spirit's in us. And that's why we're walking in it and doing it. And so I don't know if, if any of your listeners or viewers are going through something where they go, I just don't know. Just know because God has you. I think we all go through periods of uncertainty and more frequently than we talk about going yeah. through them. And you yeah. have that as your life story. When you yeah. went through the traumatic brain injury and the healing process, God brought you healing but you didn't just stop there. Mm -hmm. You allowed God to work through you in that process. So talk about how God gives us the victory and we have then a piece to do with that. Why do you think God does that for us? We're designed for specific things. God designed us all for this. He designed for us to be talking again today, right? So pretty much where, where I am in my faith walk now, I don't want this to sound obnoxious. I was telling a friend of mine the other day, I just don't care. And they're like, well, that's kind of, and I'm like, no, don't get me wrong. I don't care in this sense. I don't care about who I am or who people think I am, but I do care and am fully aware of whose I am. There is a stark difference in thinking who we are than knowing whose we are. And when you know whose you are, right? We're the Lord's, we belong to him. He's given us all the gifts, all the talents that we can use. You kind of have, and I don't care, like, I don't care. In other words, I don't care what life throws at me. Nothing is going to be bigger than him. I don't care what he calls me to do. Nothing is going to be bigger than him. You know, when we do all these recordings and we tour and we go and see all these shows, we're about to go do a show in Missouri. The logistics are crazy to do that. And, and I'm like, yep, I don't care because he's going to lay it all out. If he put this together, which he did, he's going to take care of it. I just want to, there's freedom in that, that if you don't know, you don't know, but there's just a freedom in that because it takes away all the worldly thoughts that we can put in our own minds, right? Because we're totally, totally, totally focused on him. If that made any sense, that's- Yeah, I'm seeing that it's our human nature to want to know everything and to want right? to figure it all out. 
and I want to be in control of that process and right. think about how we're presenting ourselves and where we're going and and do all that branding stuff. When you say who yeah. you are, you mean like your right. brand of who you are, what other people exactly. see. Or even but, or even worried about what people think about you. Yeah. I'm, I'm so done with that. Or what's going to happen to you next? Because there's that a fear too. factor that you went through, a huge fear factor of not knowing what was next when you were going through the process of recovery. Can That's you talk right. about how that fear factor, how you walked that out, and that really helped you with this deep faith of trusting God with every step? Yeah, the, that's a great question. The, 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 I don't, I don't want to say this. I don't think I really experienced fear because the first month of my recovery, I slept for 20 hours a day. So I didn't even know what was going on. They were just trying to figure out if I was going to have aneurysms and falsions and survive during that time. So once I came out of that and I became a little bit more cognizant, right? Um, there was a lot of, a lot of praying, like, so I couldn't speak correctly. So if you and I were talking, then I would be Tina. So in Orlando, when I saw you, I thought, and so what would happen, that's how I was seeing words in my head, right? So I'd go, Tina, Orlando, those go together. And it was in, in some family and even me, I'm like, is this the new deal? I mean, cause I'm on a ceiling most of the time and that's hard to believe, but, but that, right. And I was like, come on, because I'm used to going a thousand miles an hour and I'm doing seven. So it wasn't really like a fear thing, but there was a lot of questions like, like, Lord, what's going on here? What's going on? What's going on here? And then several weeks, the second month of my recovery is when I audibly heard God's voice speak to me. That's where Jeremiah 29, 11 came from on the three days record. He audibly, now as an artist, the Holy Spirit gives you a check and says, take this, run with it. You trying to do your, your show, right? And God will say, here's something, just run with that. And he gives us that as creatives. This was the very first time I audibly had him speak lyrics. So I'm going back and forth to my office and I'm just writing big third grade looking letters because I wasn't together yet. But that's where the song came from. And it was God's way of telling me, you may think you're concerned about if you're coming out of this, but me, but God, and watch what I do with this. All I need you to do is moving at so I find that when we get fearful about things, especially in our faith walk, we have to dial it in and press into Him, right, and let Him speak into our life to where we can move in that confidence of whose we are. There it is again, right, rather than who we are. Because I had a preconceived notion about what I was doing for Him, even right. Oh, Christian rock band, and we're, and we're doing that to to reach people for you. But he, it was a, it was just this real quiet voice, subtle reminder of whose I was. And it was kind of like, son, I have you just, just do what I'm telling you. And sometimes it's not about the big moments that everyone sees. Nope. God is really about those personal moments too. And you were able to really minister to your own father through what yeah. God brought you in this healing journey, not just to masses and, yeah. and audiences. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah. Wow. Thanks for that. Uh, yeah. So, so, and me and my daddy were close and, you know, when you're Italian, it's daddy, it's not dad. So it, we were really close. And the worst thing my daddy told me, like a full week out of before he passed, he says, Hey, I may not be here for you next week. And I was like, that's great, dad. So, you know that. And then, but, but in the last couple of days of his life, we were having a little one-to-one -one and I was like, so daddy, not only do you have a place at the buffet table, you've got a name tag set up. I need you to tell me that you know where you're going. And if not for you, do it for me. I just, bring that so his nickname for me is pastor boy right so he's like yes pastor boy i know where i'm going i'm like that's any other day daddy was real cute not today i need to know he says jesus died he rose again 
I'm going to heaven, right? I'm like, absolutely right. And so you're going to, you're about to be immaculately healed. So it's going to be, it's going to suck for us. It's going to be great for you. And in retrospect, it's also great for me because I know where you're living. So I know I'll see you again and I'll meet you there. And that's where the whole I'll meet you there title of the song came from. And it was a great closure moment, right? Because it gave you confidence in, in knowing you'll see him again. Yeah. Such a powerful story. I know we went over this in the previous interview, but we yeah. got to do it again because it's yeah, just such not? a wonderful testimony of where God met you in that space and how he's constantly bringing those personal message things that he's done in your life as a way of you ministering as a testimony. That's how we know who God is through the truth, through the power of the word and the testimony that we share. So your testimony is always so powerful. It's not just yeah. music, even though the music is amazing. It's yeah. also that strong messaging that comes through and it comes yeah. from your heart. So how can people oh, get a copy of Yahweh Nisi and stay in touch with you and stay connected with you? That's awesome. Thanks for that as well. So we're streaming everywhere. Spotify seems to be the number one thing, just empowered Yahweh Nisi. And, they, and then our whole catalog pulls up on that iTunes, Deezer, there's like 30 streaming services um, or they can get in touch with us through our website. And that is rockin' without a G, R-O-C-K-I-N, the number four, Jesus.com. So rockin' for Jesus.com. I hope that all of you listening are inspired now to go out and check out Rockin' for Jesus at the Empowered website and get a copy of Yahweh Nisi and all of the other albums, because this is a powerful way to really commune with God through music. And I know that the genuine heart behind this makes it even more impactful for those who hear it. And of course, I also hope that you subscribe and come back for the next episode of Flourishment. Flourishment is part of the Spark Media Network and can be found on the Edify app.